I gathered the 50 most annoying mistakes that so many players make in Mobile Legends. <laughs> Moontoon, put this thing on the fucking front page of the game, please. Thanks. Also, which is the most annoying mistake for you? Let me know in the comments. Now, let's start with the drafting phase. The most annoying thing here are those guys who just can't adjust. No matter what. There is already a jungler? They don't give a damn. There's a player with a 70% win rate for the same role, while they only have a 43% win rate, they pick the hero anyway. A teammate mains a totally OP hero, and we have the first pick? Nope, they pick Layla as the first pick. Usually they are also the ones that are the most toxic, and the first to go RFK or troll around. So you might think now, these are the worst kind of players that exist in the game. But oh boy, we just started. This was only one mistake and we still have 49 to go. A slightly better but still annoying AF version of these players are the ones that pick their one main hero no matter what. The enemy has two heroes with lifesteal, it's time to pick Sun and feed them with as much HP as possible. Like, you must know which heroes count as your main hero. Especially when you have over 1000 game with that hero. This is anyway something I can't get into my head. I met players with over 7 or 8000 matches and their knowledge of the game was on the level I had where after blah, this mystics annoy me I can't even speak. After 100 games. Is it not boring when you have no idea what you're doing? I don't expect everyone to be a pro, but not even knowing the basics of the game after thousands of matches? Bruh. These players also get flamed so many times. How are you not thinking to yourself? Oh, maybe I should learn how to be better, because in every match people say I'm shit. And talking about having no idea, the guy who is picking a OP hero, but have no idea how to play that one annoys me as well. A OP hero is only really OP if you have the slightest idea of what you're doing with him. If you don't even know the combos, don't pick that hero. And better play a hero you're familiar with. If nobody in your team can play any of the 5 most OP heroes, make sure to ban them. And not ban irrelevant heroes in the current meta. If you ban a counter, it's one thing. But banning heroes like Harley or Saber, who are far from being OP anymore is a joke. Same for the trolls who ban Layla for fun. Wow, you're so funny that everyone is annoyed about you. And since you most likely suck at the game, you waste 20 minutes of 4 other people's life. I already mentioned Harley and Saber, who are not OP anymore. But there are still these people who haven't got the memo about the changed meta. And this is really annoying. It is so easy, just look for one minute into the heroes ranking and see who is the most banned and picked heroes. Is that really that difficult? I guess many players don't even know that this exists. What also doesn't exist is the attention span of some players. They don't ban a hero and after almost all heroes are already picked you get a message like Yo sorry I was watching TV. And then most of the time they just pick a hero for a lane that is already filled. Like bruh. If you just wanna play casually it's fine, go to classic. But in ranking most people actually want to rank up. And with this behavior you waste the time of your teammates. Oof. And after flaming so much. It seems a bit strange to tell you that another annoying mistake is to flame. There are just so many players flaming non-stop and I'm not shy to admit, I got a bit annoyed at some points myself already. But in the end, flaming will never help you to win any game. So try your best to avoid it. And when someone flames you, let them. Don't feed the troll, because this only makes it worse. The players who flame non-stop, while being by far the worst player on the team, are really annoying. But by fighting with them, you lose your own focus and they probably start to troll afterwards. Someone who is not trolling but is almost as annoying are the guys who don't know what build and emblem they have to use. I get it. In the beginning, the items are a bit overwhelming. But nowadays, there are help texts in the game. And there are enough videos on YouTube where all items are being explained. Hell, I made a video about every item and emblem that exists. So if you don't know how the item works, Go watch the whole playlist right after this video. Your win rate will increase by at least 5%, guaranteed. Hand in hand with this also goes the guys who don't build crucial items like anti heal items. If the enemy has heroes who can regen a lot of HP and you are the tank, don't you dare running around without dominance eyes. This will make you lose the game. And it's so frustrating if you tell your teammates to buy a certain item, but they just completely ignore it. Another thing that is being ignored so many times is the minimap, that everyone makes a mistake 
or doesn't see everything is okay. But there's so many blind players where I'm starting to wonder if they just make the minimap as small as possible so it's not blocking their view. I actually made it bigger because my eyes are glued on it for about 70% of each match. I don't need to see how I torture the poor minions or watch my heroes sitting in the bush. I look at the map and see what is happening everywhere else. And because I do that, I have a pretty good map awareness. If I'm on the side lane in the early game and killed my counterpart, I know that usually at least one enemy will show up to defend the lane. Since I watched the map closely, either I know where every enemy was in the last 30 seconds, or if I haven't seen an enemy for a long time, I expect that guy to be on the way to my lane, and I'm not risking my life by pushing. If I see everyone though, I can push as much as I can, until I see the enemies come to me, or it's time for my counterpart to show up again. This is just one of 100 examples regarding map awareness, and the main reason for my solo queue to Mythic series, where I show you every decision I make in the game. Now, if you already watched videos of the series, you saw me doing exactly what I said you shouldn't do. For example, I tried to gank while I couldn't see the enemies. That's because everybody makes mistakes, especially when you're not mentally ready. This is so important if you want to rank up, that I even make a whole video about the psychology of the game. If you're angry from the last match or tired because you had a stressful day, stay away from ranking. When you have a bad day and you lose this 50-50 matches because your performance is not as good as usual, it makes not only you annoyed, but also your teammates. For example, the last weeks were really stressful for me, which is the reason I didn't upload anything, because there was just no time. And when I played some ranked games, I lost more than usual, because I was really tired and made some really bad plays. Better go to classic and play heroes you usually don't play to learn them, or play a main hero you haven't used that much lately. You can also use that time to focus to improve on other things like your ability to farm. When your team is not on the level of the opponent, the only chance you have to make a comeback is by being enough farm. Don't miss any minion wave as Elena and as jungler, get every jungle creeper minion you can. And as a rumor, you're fucked. No, seriously. Try to help out that one teammate that is really good and make sure that at least this one teammate can farm properly. And if all four are bad, then you just have an unlucky matchup, which happens. Now when I say you need to farm enough, this includes a rule I established already in the first noob mistakes video I've made. If your team is being stupid, just tell yourself, I'm not dying no matter what. That counts for every rule except the Roma rule, because it's kinda their job to die while protecting their teammates. But as any other rule, you need to focus on farming and in order to do that, you need to be alive. Don't die together with your teammates who haven't watched this video and who are ganking and dying non-stop. Keep farming and tell them to stop. If they flame you, so be it. You can't win a 5v5 gank if the enemy has much more gold and XP than your team. So the only thing you can do is to stay alive and keep farming. And also hope that your allies will realize that they should stop ganking. I do not mean by this that you should ignore the chance to ambush an enemy in the 3v1 by the way. Don't get me wrong here, but if your allies decide to jump into a 2v5, let them die and stay alive. This is a mistake I was doing too many times. I tried to help my noob teammate and just died with them. Sometimes I even made a bigger mistake and expected my teammates to do the next logical thing. Never do that. Don't trust any random teammate from the beginning, even when they have a 65% win rate with a certain hero. Don't expect as a Roma for example, that your allies will follow up your setup. The jungler maybe just saw that his blue buff is up. And junglers love their blue buff, even more than the lord. So don't be surprised if you all die trying to steal the lord from the enemy, while the jungler is happily farming the blue buff and calls you all noob for dying. This mistake happened so many times to me that I really want to point it out, also for my own sake. You can only trust an ally after you saw multiple times that this guy did exactly the right thing. But even then, always double check what everyone is doing or you might get surprised by the actions of your teammates, which leads to you making mistakes as well. Many players just don't have the required game knowledge that they should have. And since Moonton is not really helping any players in the game itself, we need to adjust to the players who don't even know the basics. And talking about learning, that's where I see many mistakes as well. If you play the hero for like 5 times, 
You don't really know yet how they work. Depending on your general Mobile Legend experience and the complexity of the hero, you need at least 20 games as a really experienced player or more than 100 games as a beginner to really understand one single hero. When you learn a new hero, you need to read the skill descriptions in full detail and really understand each small mechanic to really become good with the hero. Watching guides and checking out pro gameplays also helps. On a side note here, I'm planning a new community event regarding hero guides. So if you haven't subscribed yet, do it now so you will not miss the announcement. Back to the not existing knowledge. You need to know what each skill does, what items you have to use in which situation and how you have to adapt your playstyle to your hero. If you have a late game hero, playing super aggressive in the early game is a big no-no. As late game hero, you need to keep your head down and just farm without anyone noticing you. So once you hit your power, well, well, power spike, you can blast on the scene and take out the whole enemy who already forgot that you exist. The opposite of course is playing super carefully with an early game monster. Whenever I see a saber running around without any kills or assists after 7 minutes, I'm just wondering what in the world he's doing all the time. Saber has the ability to kill any squishy hero with 75% once he reaches level 4 but falls off the cliff once the late game hits. So your goal must be to reach level 4 as soon as possible and start killing the enemies to support your team. If you're not doing that, your team is basically playing a 4v5 because you're not using the strength of your hero. Not using your combos right is another way to weaken your hero drastically. I had the perfect example in one of my solo queue to mythic challenge videos where Vale used his second followed by his first and his ult. Because he didn't use his combo right, I could escape his ult and he died afterwards. So before you jump into a match with a new hero, check the possible combos. Most heroes have more than one good working combo and you should know all of them. If you want to become really good, you don't only need to know the combos of your heroes but also the skills, cooldowns and combos of the heroes your enemy uses. If you know for example how long the cooldown of Argus ult is, you know the time frame in which you can attack him without being worried that he can activate it. Most players don't put in the work to get this knowledge. So if you are one of the few who knows these things, you can outplay and surprise your enemy many many times. In order to not surprise your teammates though by your absence, you should definitely know how to rotate correctly. This is one of the main reasons why players are stuck in Epic or Legend. When you play as a side laner, it's pretty simple. Stay on your lane and defend it and rotate only on your side of the map to help or to gang mid at the turtle area or when your jungler gets invaded. The jungler, mid laner and roamer should rotate together though. What is so difficult to do with many randoms who don't know this basic rule. In this ranks you still see many times Roma who just want to babysit the marksman which is horrible for the mid laner and jungler and takes them out of the game. If the enemies notice it, they can easily start to invade the jungle, get every turtle for themselves and basically can control the whole jungle area and mid lane. The jungler and mid laner face a consistent 2v3 situation which makes the match obviously super difficult if the enemy is good. Instead, the three should rotate together. First the jungler should become level 4 or you guys invade the enemy's jungler together if you have heroes who are already strong on level 1. Afterwards rotate to the most promising side lane which is many times the gold lane with the MMs and try to get the first blood. Afterwards the turtle is about to spawn, spawn, spawn so they take care of taking it. Next the jungler can get the second round of buffs and gank the side lane again and so on. They need to support both side laners so they can get control over their lane and when there's a chance push mid or steal the bust from the enemy's jungler. Unfortunately in random teams, one of these three either rotates to the other side lane which can lead to a 3v4 which you obviously don't want to have or one of them don't rotate or gank at all. This is so important though and that's why I pounded out so much. If you have a good working trio, you can easily win 80% of all matches. So if you play as a trio, always try to get this three rolls and let the other two players go to the side lane. Now, since we are already talking about MMs and assassins, one thing you should always avoid with them is jumping first into a gank. There is a reason that tanks exist and this is to take the damage for the squishy heroes who can die instantly. But their job is impossible to fulfill if you are one of these players that jumps first into any gank no matter what. They are also usually the players that blame their tank for dying. But as tank, you have no chance because you can't protect your ally from themselves. As Tigreal, I wanted to push my allies sometimes away because of how stupid they play. But sadly, you can only do that with Jawhead. Now, since we are already halfway through, I want to talk about one thing that annoys me probably the most out of all the mistakes. Players who are not going for any objectives. 
In my recent matches, I'm always the one who dealt the most turret damage. That's because firstly, I like to play heroes who are able to push turrets, because since many players are not doing it, I can take care of it myself. And secondly, if I see the opportunity to push, I do it, regardless if I can push the whole turret through or not, even when you only take half of it down. It means the next time, you only have to break down the other half. So in the second attempt, you will most likely be successful. But besides turrets, there are other objectives, like the turtle. And as I explained already, I at least four member of the team should take care of that. But I saw it countless times already, that the mage and Roma rotated to the other side of the map while I tried to take it down, which resulted in three enemies who showed up and I'd had to get the fuck out of there to not die for nothing. This may be as a little tip, don't try to force anything alone if you have a high risk of dying. If you're alone at the turtle as a jungler, for example, and three enemies show up, just run. Even when the turtle only have 25% HP, the risk of dying is way too high and it's not worth dying for the turtle, even when you've got it. If you have no support, better wait for the enemy to take it down and try to steal it sneaky with your retribution and run afterwards. Trying to force things because they are generally right, but without support of any of your teammates, will only result in you dying frequently, which means you will feed the enemy and stay weak yourself. Now I gave you an advice mainly for the junglers, so let's bash some of them now. One thing that is so frustrating for me is, when the jungler is prioritizing the buffs over the lord. Three enemies are dead and the whole team screams to take the lord, these junglers doesn't care, because the fucking blue buff is sacred for them. So they take down the blue buff and you as a team has to make the decision to take the risk that the enemy could steal the lord or to leave the lord alone and waste this opportunity to take it down. Both is really frustrating, especially in the close matchup where the lord is a real game changer. Something else that is super frustrating are those players who are non-stop ganking. Ganks should only happen with a purpose. You want to push the turret top, then start a gank on the top lane. The lord is up, time to kill a couple of enemies and take it down afterwards. And listen to my wording, a couple of enemies. To take down the lord, you don't need a wipeout. Often it can be enough to take down the enemy's jungler, because now your jungler only needs to use retribution at the exact right moment. Many players tend to keep fighting, even though the purpose of the gank is already fulfilled. Now, let's turn the situation around. When your team is on the losing end of a gank, or the enemy's team just ganked you on the side lane. The worst thing so many players do afterwards is jumping headless into a 1v4 or 2v5. This is so frustrating. Your team can lose a gank with bad timing for example, and two teammates died alongside with you. The remaining two have to stay alive and keep the turret safe. While you can't win a 1v3 on the open field, many heroes have the ability to defend the turret alone against three enemies. And if they are too fat, just run and wait for your allies to respawn. The worst thing that can happen now is that these two players die before the rest of the team respawns, because then these three players have to wait for the two other players again, and so on. I lost so many matches because I died in a gank and my smart teammates decided to jump into a 2v5 and after they died, we had to defend the base in a 3v5. And if you're not playing it smart, you lose the match now. By playing smart I mean, you try to get rid of all minions so the enemy can't destroy the base. If possible, you should try to keep the minions or the lord of the blub, out of the zone from the base anyway, so the enemy doesn't get the chance to finish the game. What is almost worse than that are these players that unnecessarily chase enemies. Some players apparently can't live with themselves when an enemy escapes with 1 HP, so they think it's really smart to tower dive alone, die from the turret damage and end up in the WTF moment video. Or they followed the wounded bloke into the enemy's jungle, where they will be happily picked up by the enemy's jungler, who just loves to get a free kill. Especially in the early game. You don't necessarily need to kill the enemy to take an objective. There we have it again. The time where the enemy has to recall is almost as long as a respawn time. But while you chase the enemy, you not only waste your time, where you could get some sweet turret gold, you also take an unnecessary risk which is something you should never do. This also has something to do with the psychology of the game. In the early game, almost all players are focused because they don't know how good the enemy is. But if your team dominates in the first 5 minutes of the game, many players tend to get overconfident and just create risky situations for themselves. Often they don't even realize that the enemy is not that far behind in gold as I think they are and then get surprised that they couldn't survive a 1v3. Or they are taunting the enemy's Franco who missed every hook until now, but that one time where he didn't auto aim, he got you and shot you down, which is followed up by an epic comeback from the enemy. 
every risk should be calculated. Because if you're always aware how risky a situation is, you don't get surprised by anything. Now, I was talking about the auto-aiming Franco. So let's continue with this. Auto-aiming. I get it, that new players just auto-aim their skills, but honestly, the sooner you start to skill your to skill your aim, that also works, yeah. The easier you will have it to adapt. If you become good at aiming your skills, you will naturally hit the enemies much more often with it, what leads to much more damage from your side and let you win important ganks. If you keep missing most of your skills though, it doesn't matter how good you rotate or how good your map awareness is, because unless you are a tank meat chill, you're basically useless. Even when you feel like you're less effective in the beginning, after a few matches, you will get significantly better. And sooner or later you will see that you're much better after learning how to aim your skills. Or you use a hero where the aim is not as important. That's up to you. What is also up to you is using the stupid chat function non-stop. The moment where you start to rage over the chat function is the point where I can almost guarantee you that you will lose this match. The chat function should be only used for short commands, like when you want to swap a lane for example, or to taunt the enemy of course. But roasting your teammates will not let you win any single game. One tip, if you feel rising tension from your teammates, just write, please no toxic. It worked wonders for me, and many times everyone went back to play normal. It doesn't work always of course, because some people are just toxic assholes. But if this just saves you one match, it was already worth trying. Now we're so long in already, that I want to do a little quick fire. Because for this mistakes, there's no long explanation needed I think. Thanks to non-stop babysit the MM we had already. But I want to mention it once more. Helping the MM is a very important task for the team, because a fat MM can carry the whole game. But not helping the three remaining allies for the MM's sake doesn't work out. Also one more thing for all tanks out there. You have the very important task to provide vision for your allies. Checking bushes, camping in good positions to prevent ambushes etc is one of your most important tasks you have. And for all junglers out there, don't fucking touch the minions in the first 5 minutes of the game. Unless you want to push with your teammates and need to be quick. That also includes those junglers who get the first minion wave. You just steal the farm of your mid laner this way, who usually have a huge power spike on level 4. And you delay this when taking the first minion wave instead of your first buff. Also don't be a jungler who just farms non-stop and never ganks. Kills are also very important for junglers to get farmed all on, so you will fall behind if you just farm all jungle creeps. Now for all the non-junglers out there, when your jungler is being invaded by the enemy's team, help their poor bloke for fuck's sake. When the enemy has a tank like Tigreal or Franco or a Roma like Natalia or Johead, the chance that they invade your jungler and try to delay this farm is huge. So please help to defend their buffs or your jungler will stay forever on level 1. I especially love those players who don't have the jungler, who is getting invaded non-stop and calls them useless after a few minutes. What is wrong with those players? Also, what is wrong with those players who takes a small jungle camp before the jungler reaches level 4? The jungler needs at least 2 buffs and 2 small jungle camps to reach level 4. And if you steal one of them, you delay this process. The jungler has to go then on the other side of the map or stay on level 3 and will be useless since most junglers need to be on level 4 to become really effective. So don't fucking touch them before your jungler reaches level 4. In general, leave the jungle area just for the jungler, if you don't want that your jungler is farming your minions. This is the most basic concept. Junglers farm with jungle creeps and kills and laners farm with minions and also with kills. And Romas support all of them and farms automatically when everyone else farms. Why are so many players selfish? and think that everything belongs to them. Your whole team will fall behind with this behavior. The same applies for the buffs. Some heroes really need the blue buff to be effective, like Ling or Fanny for example. Stealing their blue buff as a teammate is the worst thing you can do, because without it, they are much less scary for the enemy. And you want them to be scary for the enemy. So don't be selfish, especially because your hero most likely doesn't even need it anyway. The one thing you definitely need most of the time is the lore to end the game. One thing that enrages me is when you have the chance to take it down because some enemies are dead, but everyone is busy taking down the few remaining enemies who are left behind and hide under the turret or to farm the buffs or minions. If you have the chance to take the lord, you have to do it. Even when you're not ending the game with it, you can push a couple of turrets through with the help of the lord and the super minions. So not taking it doesn't make any logical sense. Unless the enhanced lord is about to spawn in 10 seconds. Then you should wait for it. Now, let me ask you a quick question. If you took down the lord, what should you do next? 
heading into a gang before the lord even spawned. It's definitely the wrong thing to do. I can tell you how many times my teammates went straight into a gang and died just after taking the lord and therefore wasted completely. You just need a little patience here and wait for it to spawn. Then you try to push all three lanes at the same time so you can push through at least one of them. But ganking while most of you lost a good amount of HP is the worst move you can do. Now talking about pushing all three lanes. I also help those guys who think it's a good idea to farm the buffs now. Even when it's the enemies. You all need to push the lanes now so your enemy can't defend them all anymore. By farming the buffs you can't put pressure on the enemy and you give them the chance to defend all lanes and ultimately waste the lord. <laughs> now I already bashed the jungle and the roamers. Time to get the rest of the pack. Dear side laners, please don't stick non-stop on your lane. Yes, your main duty is to keep your lane safe, but that doesn't mean you should ignore the fight at the turtle area right next to you or that you're not allowed to rotate to the mid lane to outnumber the enemies and the gang there. But also as I just said, remember that your lane is your main priority. So also don't be the guy who suddenly appear on the other side of the map while your turrets are just getting pushed through by your counterpart. You need to find the right mix of rotating and sticking on your lane. Now, dear mid laners, your job is to rotate together with the jungler and the roamer and help out on all lanes, help to get the turtle, help your jungler and the jungle if necessary etc. Your job is not to stick on the mid lane forever and non stop 1v1 the other mid laner. I explained the concept of the rotating trio already so I'm not repeating myself. That's why just a quick line for all members of the trio. So next time you play a Roma, jungler or mid laner that sticks in your brain. I am part of a trio and not a solo laner. So I must rotate together with them and destroy my enemy. Now if you do that successfully nothing can stop you. Unless you are one of the many players who doesn't know that they should freeze the lane when their team has the upper hand. This concept is widely ignored although it's so simple. When your team has the upper hand and the enemy only have the inner turrets left they usually will hide inside of the base. So what you can do now is to lure them out. Attacking all minions non-stop will not help you because then your enemy can just farm them and you can do anything about that. Instead just let the minions beat the crap out of each other and you hide in the bush near them. This kind of forces the enemy to come out of the base because otherwise they can't farm anything anymore. So you give them the impossible task to either stay safe but that the enemy becomes stronger and stronger or that they have to take the risk and go to the minions where you can pick them up easily because you have the gold lead. This is the most easiest concept of taking advantage of your gold lead and your enemies will most likely give up. What is something you should never do? Don't give up even when you have the newbiest teammates ever. Is newbiest even a word? Well now it is. I know it's hard sometimes and you have the feeling that some players try to lose on purpose because they make literally every mistake that I just mentioned until now. Still there's always a chance for a comeback. I had matches where we were down in kills 2 to 21 and we still won the game. Even when your allies are very very bad the enemy could start to get overconfident and this opens the door for you to turn the game around and win the damn thing. So what does this tell you? Yes if you're in the team that is wiping the floor with the enemies don't start to become overconfident. Just because you killed the noob later in the enemy's team already 10 times it doesn't mean that she's not dealing any damage in the late game and shoots you to the moon with a few basic attacks. Getting overconfident can turn around the game completely because the 15 ganks you won until now doesn't matter. If you lose the one at the end that lets you lose the entire game. So never ever become overconfident and focus on finishing the game as fast as you can. This is now really the worst mistake you can do. I'm sure you saw already many videos of teams who just spammed the recall button instead of finishing the match when they had the chance and after their enemy respawned they killed all of them and they won the game instead. If you can finish the game just do it. Don't attack the enemies and just focus on the stupid looking base of the enemy. Even if one or two of you die in the process it doesn't matter because when the game is over it's over. When you're in a 5v2 situation all of you should just attack the base. Let the enemies attack you and kill a few of you. Who cares? You just need to destroy the base then there's no problem. And if everyone is doing that two enemies can't defend against five players. I can't understand those players who just run around the enemy's base and are scared that they might die in the process while three of the teammates attack the base and die because they are not helping and the enemy's base in the end only have one HP left. But because of that scared chickens the game is continuing and the enemy has the chance for a comeback now. So please 
if you're not remembering anything from the whole video, just remember this one thing. Attack the fucking base if you have the chance. But wait, there's even one bigger mistake than this. Players who don't know what they have to do next. The thing is that this topic is so complicated to explain that you need this whole series where I explain it to you. Also a huge shout out to my patrons Garo P, Mist, Twisted J and Mavis. Have a great day guys!